Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly, and I've got a good one for you today. There's something about starting your day early and getting an early start, getting ahead of everybody, getting out amongst them before sun really comes up. I find it to be really productive. Uh, but there's so much going on in the economy right now, national news uh, that I want to share with you guys that uh, is just crazy. All these different warnings that are out there from different people. And uh, uh, before I get into it, please take a second. Please hit the like button, uh, the subscribe button, and uh, the bell notifications to get notified of everything we're doing. Uh, first things first, we're getting serious warnings from, you know, the big banks now. Goldman Sachs stepped forward and they're issuing a warning that interest rates need to be raised four times this year. Not just once, not just twice, four times. And uh, what's fascinating about that is they're talking about March, June, September, and now December that they uh, say interest rates should be uh, raised. But again, we're being told one day that the economy's fantastic, and then the next day we're, we're not being told that. So with that happening, uh, I know you've got to look at this for, for what it is. Some of us, most of us, will never deal with Goldman Sachs as our bank. And uh, by the way, just so you guys know, they clean the sand, do it once or twice a week, where they come out and they scrape the sand and get rid of all the gunk. Usually do it after a weekend, clean it all up. Kind of cool to see it being out here really early, but it makes the sand all clean and crisp and you get rid of all the crap that's on the sand. Okay. So Goldman Sachs, Jan Hadias, the head of, you know, uh, 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 global trades or whoever the hell he is, uh, has talked about how they're going to raise interest rates uh, four times uh, this year and sees it as a real problem. Well, again, if it's such a problem, raise interest rates right now. We're being told that the economy is doing great and that we're at full employment. And then you get somebody uh, that's that's again probably heard of this guy, Jeffrey Gunlock, who's another billionaire, talking about how the economy is in deep trouble. Our money is in deep trouble. Our finances are in deep trouble and everything is made in China. We shouldn't have to deal with, you know, the Chinese uh, in buying everything. We should manufacture more things here. But uh, he sees this, that our money is worth this. He sees Bitcoin as a, as a joke. And Jeffrey Gunlock is calling that, uh, saying that the economy is absolutely um, uh, a joke right now and that we're in for huge huge trouble so again when you hear these experts talk this way you know does that motivate you does that make, make you say oh my gosh guys this is crazy that uh, Jeffrey Gunlock from Stillwater is stepping up and saying that uh, we've got big problems people just need to go to the grocery store to see that we have big problems now you know, one thing that happened that I get a kick out of is that we're supposed to be told that we're near full employment right now and that everything is perfect in our economy. And that's why companies, you know, are having difficulty hiring people. No, I don't believe that. I also believe that that we've been given people so much stimulus and so much money that uh, you're going to see real problems with this because there are people that just don't want to work right now. Okay. So very unique situation to say the least but again I don't believe that we're in full employment I don't believe this nonsense of uh, less than 4% unemployment you don't you know you'd have to be delusional to believe that now here's the thing lululemon the fantastic yoga pants company that women look so perfect in okay and again not every woman buys these pants to go work out in they just announced that their fourth quarter is going to be completely shot and that they're going to be, you know, uh, down an absolute ton. Why is that? You know, women don't want to look good wearing those yoga pants. Well, they're not out working out because of the health crisis. Okay, who believes that? Seriously. I just think people don't have the money. They're not spending the money on things like expensive yoga pants. A friend of mine that bought yoga pants from Wish Oh my gosh, look at these. They were $6 each. How do I look in them? <laughs> you look amazing. Okay. But my point is, is that that's the things that's hurting Lululemon. It's not the fact that uh, people aren't working out. Do you believe this stuff? Now remember, Lululemon last week, 
they bought Mir. Mir got downgraded that their sales are cut in half. Now Lululemon sales are cut. You just can't make this stuff up, guys. But interest rates are gonna be raised and everything's gonna be fantastic. But the economy's doing great and we're at full employment. So, again, let me show you guys. It's kind of cool. So, you... so they clean the beach like that. Absolutely. It's just kind of cool to see something like that a little different as the sun comes up and comes over the hill behind me. So, share your thoughts and all this stuff, guys. I really want to know if you think that, uh, that uh, you know, I mean, do you care that people like Jeffrey Gunlock step forward and says, we're in real trouble? Or does that make you say, oh, wow, we are in real trouble? Here's something else. I was at a Walmart over the weekend, and we were talking about, you know, supply chain issues a lot we talk about. And Walmart, you know, had a bunch of bare spots on the shelves. And I'm like, wow, this is looking bad. I mean, waters are really low and toilet paper and, and certain pasta dishes, you know, that little tiny packages and stuff are, are off. And so I saw one of the employees and I said, wow, it looks like inventory is really down. And you guys, you know, is there a problem with this? Oh, no, just uh, there's too many people out here to uh, uh, stock the shelves. You mean, you mean customers? There's too many customers in the way to stock shelves with people would buy this stuff because people were looking for waters and looking for the pasta dishes and stuff like that. Yeah, we'll do it later. So again, <laughs> customer service, bad service. If it was that guy's company and he was going to get a paycheck from selling something, I guarantee the shelves would be stocked. So that's one thing you need to look at is that as far as the uh, supply chain issues, there are definite issues. There really are. But I found a great article that uh, uh, one of the subscribers sent me that uh, uh, talked about the difference between, you know, a supply chain problem and if there's a shortage of something. And it talks about how certain brands, certain meat, pastas, and things like that that you can look forward to seeing inside the stores, if they have that, uh, you know, everything's fine. If they don't, it's a real problem. And again, take a look at this article. I think you'll really enjoy it because it just, it really put me at ease because we're seeing issues. We're still seeing the supply chain issues with the, uh, the ships out here and with things completely backlogged. But again, how would you like to have a business that uh, um, you can't get merchandise to? Uh, CBTL, the coffee maker company, little pods that go in the coffee maker, uh, they finally got them and uh, they were on the boat for four months okay from when they were shipped to where the stores got them it took four months to get the coffee pods in the stores finally got them now so again what else is going to be four months late guys so share your thoughts and all this stuff i really want to know what you guys think and uh, i i think that we're in just for huge huge problems uh with the supply chain stuff that are getting things backed up right now and uh when January rolls around, one thing that happens is people start to think about their taxes and filing their taxes. A couple things that people need to look forward to in January is the IRS is going to send out a couple of forms and they either apply to you or they don't apply to you, but form 6475 is a form that will let you know what stimulus checks you got. Now here's the thing. This is important and you need to keep track of this because I have a lot of people that write me and say, Dan, I never got the stimulus check. And, uh, you know, I need to know how to get that. So if you didn't get it and they're saying you got it, you need to deal with that and contact them right away. There'll be phone numbers and things like that uh, to contact them. The next thing is people that took advantage of the uh, child tax credit. If you've got small children, children under 18 in your house that are dependents, Form 6419 will let you know if you got advances on that. And again, I didn't get an advance, okay? So you need to let them know right away, and that's important. Now, here's the thing. If you never got a stimulus check, you didn't get one, two, three, whatever. I get people that write me all the time. Dan, I got one. Dan, I got, I got one and three, I didn't get two, okay? If you are eligible, there is a thing called recovery rebate that you can contact the IRS for. I got a couple stories below, and uh, 
couple people, accountants and stuff that did TikToks on that stuff so you guys can take a look at that. But again, look at this to see if you're eligible. The other thing is that right now with the tax changes, uh, it is anticipated that people are going to get smaller refunds this time. And people are upset about that. There's 60% of the people that file a tax return get a refund. And they're talking about how this is going to be a dismal year for tax refunds. So you got that to look forward to. Uh, so again, share your thoughts on this stuff. You know, if you didn't get the, the uh, stimulus checks and you were entitled to them, or somebody's elderly and they were entitled to them, help them look at uh, rebate, recovery rebate to get their tax return because some of these people who may not even be responsible to file a tax return will have to file a tax return this time just to get the the rebate check so you know help them figure it out contact the irs call them and ask questions that's what they're there for so i get people every time i say that people freak out call them oh my god then they're gonna know my name no they're not they don't care okay they're to help okay so share your thoughts and all this stuff guys i want to know what you think So many people are unhappy with their existing work environment that there's a study out there that you have to read that says that almost 25% of the people surveyed about their existing job want to quit their job and hate their job and plan on quitting their job just like other people did at the end of 2021. 24% guys, that is amazing that it's that many people. Now, the problem with the work conditions and work environment and people being unhappy is that it is affecting everything right now. People's job performance, like the guy at Walmart, oh, there's too many people to put stuff out and we don't wanna deal with that, okay? People are unhappy right now. There is a nursing home in Iowa that has 750 beds. That is 750 of your grandparents, aunts, uncles, maybe your mom and dads that are upset that they don't wanna work in a nursing home anymore, okay? So much so, so many problems that the place has to file bankruptcy and they're in deep trouble for their tenants. And that is your grandmother and all these people. So QHC files for bankruptcy. And again, a huge you know, uh, nursing home chain. Well, two, they've got two nursing homes with 750 beds, but they're gonna file BK uh, this week because they can't handle uh, the lack of labor. And again, where is everybody? Who doesn't want to work? Do people really just want to sit at home? Uh, is a $1,400 check, if the, which is what they're talking about. Uh, Nancy Pelosi just stepped up and said that we should have another round of stimulus for people. Why? Okay. Again, you can't have it both ways. You can't sit there and tell us how great the economy is and that we're at full employment. And again, if we're at full employment, raise interest rates. It's that simple. Dan, you can't raise interest rates. It'll destroy the economy. The economy's destroyed, guys. Money's destroyed. The hot new thing right now, commodities, gold, silver, uh, mining stocks, things like that. That's what they anticipate is going to be huge in uh, 2022, by the end of the year. So look at all the different commodities. Look at things like that if you want to look at different investments. But share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys. I want to know what you think. It's a very interesting time for cryptocurrency. Uh, Bitcoin just hit the $40,000 threshold where it went below the deck of 40 grand. Now, one expert last week said that he thought uh, the buy opportunity was at 38,000, which I find absolutely fascinating that this guy called it and it keeps dropping, dropping, dropping. So it'll be interesting to see if he's right. And the next thing is Shiba Inu, the, the meme coin, uh, built after Dogecoin in the last week, it lost three and a half billion dollars worth of value. And right now, one thing that's fascinating about this is that they say that 40% uh, of the holders of that stock are losing money right now, 40%. 20% uh, have broken even and the rest have made money. So again, do you own Shiba? Do you own Bitcoin? Does that something that interests you? Are you curious about this? Now, one thing that they're talking about with Shiba Inu is that another story, and these are all will be below in the video description. You can find all the stories when I reference them uh, in the video. 
and that is they say that uh, uh, the metaverse, which is huge with Facebook and that Facebook changed its name and all this meta real estate. Think about this. People are buying fake real estate right now, okay? They're buying imaginary farms and imaginary land and making millions of dollars from it. There is a billionaire, some guy, that has bought and sold fake real estate online, which basically, guys, it's a video game of Farmville, okay? And speaking of Farmville, I think that they're uh, merging with somebody right now, so there's that. But again, does this interest you guys in this meta universe? Now, Shiba Inu, uh, they've got another article that says Shiba Inu is going to be huge in the metaverse and that people that own it are going to make an absolute killing on it. So again, speculative to say the least on all this stuff with the cryptocurrencies. You guys need to really, you know, decide if this is for you because it, you know, you know, people write me and, oh, this stock didn't go up fast enough and this one went down too much. Again, what do you guys think about these cryptos that just seem to go up and down willy nilly? And, and again, the metaverse, okay? Does that interest you? Um, a couple things. Uh, there is a guy out there who has a Tesla who is mining Bitcoin from his Tesla. And, uh, you know, makes a few hundred bucks a month. He says, you know, I may have avoided the warranty by doing this because I'm, you're not supposed to do this because there's a plug-in and he makes between two and four hundred bucks a month and it may not be worth it. But again, I thought it's free to run your Tesla. So why wouldn't it be free to make cryptocurrencies? So show your thoughts on this stuff, guys. I really want to know what you think. Speaking of cars, uh, they're talking about how expensive Tesla's and every other electric cars are because they're basically saying it's one big battery and uh, that it is absolutely catastrophic to the environment to produce these. They cannot get enough of the uh, uh, material to make the lithium batteries right now and uh, they have to change to other alternatives. That's interesting to say the least. The other thing is there is a company, bring your own trailer, bring a trailer. There are auto auctions for classic cars, Barrett Jackson, things like that, that you've probably seen these on TVs where they'll have the, the classic cars and they'll get hundreds of thousands of dollars for these different cars. There is a company called Bring a Trailer and they are selling this stuff, uh, these cars, and selling a, a ton of them, okay? So much so that the company did 829 million dollars in sales this year bring a trailer and it's cool the site's pretty cool i've got a link below that you can check out but it's got all the different uh uh cars that they have available right now and you know some are nice some are not some are overpriced but they're selling a ton they sold 829 million dollars worth of these cars this year and making an absolute killing on it so share your thoughts on the stuff do you guys does that interest you the classic cars do you guys mind does anybody out there mind bitcoin or any other cryptocurrencies. Those mining things that people have talked to me about and stuff, I just don't understand it. And uh, again, I don't know, you know, where do you put it? Where's the wallet go? All the different stuff that I don't understand with this, you know, is anybody else doing it? One thing that's fascinating about dealing with startups and when I had the conferences going on a regular basis, I would get different economic reports. I would get invited to Deloitte and some of the other uh, large accounting firms that would invite me uh, for presentations and things like that. One thing that was sent to me that was very cool was uh, uh, something I want to share with you guys, and that is they do an automotive study every year that I really didn't pay attention to until I started doing uh, YouTube videos, but they're talking about the state of the automotive industry, and I think you guys would find it absolutely fascinating, you know, uh, uh, from everything from EVs to, to production to things like that from an accounting firm, and it's, it's in the video description below, but that's kind of cool. Now, something completely unrelated to cars, uh, it's that time of year where Girl Scout cookies uh, start to come out, and why is this relevant? Why is this? It's just, I, I read all this stuff with marketing, and my daughter was uh, a Girl Scout for I think, 10 years. Uh, she eventually became the president of her troop. And uh, my daughter actually won the Juliet Lowe Award, which is the second highest award you can get in Girl Scouts. Juliet Lowe was the woman that founded Girl Scouts. And my daughter won that award. But Girl Scout cookies were a thorn in my neck and my side and something we dealt with every year. And I did not know this until after, okay, until after she was done with Girl Scouts, how little money 
the troop made from that effort, we would have hundreds of dollars worth of cookies that we had to purchase and then resell to family members, to friends, to everybody. And they made less than 25 cents a box at the time. And it's absolutely shocking to hear that. They just raised the price a full dollar across the country to where, you know, do si -dos, Thin Mints, all that stuff are going to be $5. There's a, a s'mores cookie and another one, they're gonna be $6. And the fascinating thing about this is they show the scale in this story that I've included below where, you know, if you sell 100 boxes, you guys will make 75 cents. Uh, you know, and then if you sell 125, it goes to 85 cents. And basically, you have to sell 450 boxes of cookies to get to a dollar a box. So again, these little girls are out in front of the grocery stores hawking these, uh, uh, hawking these uh, uh, cookies. And I had no idea how little money they made. And again, Girl Scouts was fantastic for my daughter. Taught her so much leadership, how to deal with people, how to talk to people. But man, I had no idea how little money the Girl Scout cookies make. So I'd rather give a donation, give a box away. Here's five bucks, whatever. So share your thoughts and all this stuff, guys. I want to know what you think. And take a look at that uh, Deloitte study because it's absolutely fascinating to see the state of the automotive industry. Because one thing that we're seeing is Mexico right now. And Mexico has taken a huge hit as far as their auto production. There's, the auto production in Mexico is down 40% right now, and they blame it on the chip shortage. Again, when is this going to be resolved? I don't know. Somebody wrote me today and said that they feel, Dan, that the, these kids are about to go swimming in this. And I think that they're insane. It is cold, to say the least. I guess they're not all kids, but uh, absolutely um, freezing out here. To me, it is. But... Uh, auto production in Mexico down 40% right now. Okay, is it that people can't afford it? What? Somebody wrote me today and they said, as I got sidetracked with the people going to swim in this cold weather, is that what if these prices, well, we saw the Bronco for 100 grand, what if this is what retail prices are going to be three years from now? That's insane, guys. Okay, that's absolutely insane. These Teslas and these cars that are going between forty dollars and $100,000 for these electric vehicles, that's absolute lunacy that people are paying these prices right now. And people need to, to, to wake up to this, okay? I, I think it's absolutely nuts. So share your thoughts on this stuff. I want to know what you guys think. No, no thanks, I'll pass. Um, I'm gonna finish this video with this last story. Um, sports gambling has become huge. Here's a statistic that absolutely blew me away that I read this morning, and that was 30 to 40% of all bets are placed in New Jersey right now electronically because of DraftKings and uh, uh, fan duels and uh, sites like that. Uh, they just basically legalize sports gambling and they say that New York State uh, can go out and they could raise $500 million a year from sports gambling. Okay? Super Bowl time, degenerate gamblers, bet and everything. Look at these guys getting out now. Pass, man. That is, it's freezing, guys. I am so cold right now. I know you guys are like, it's probably 60 degrees. Man. But uh, bigger men than I am. That's all I got to say. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button. Don't forget we got the email list below. If you'd like more access to me, there's a Patreon channel you can sign up for. Onward and upward, guys. There's so much to cover this week. I will see you guys very soon.